Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be putting back on our on-chain analysis hat. In this video, we're going to be talking about supply count statistics. However, we're going to be doing so by looking at the US dollar valuation of various addresses that hold Bitcoin. Normally, we actually denominate it in Bitcoin. So we look at, say, the native units, okay, when we look at, at how it how it sort of stacks up with, with regards to having a certain number of Bitcoin in, a, in an address. But in this video, I, I really want to focus in on looking at it denominated in the US dollar and trying to figure out if there are any overarching trends that we can that we can follow, okay? So if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You'll get access to this stuff and a whole lot more. Let's go ahead and jump in. So one of the things I, I wanted to mention is, you know, you, you can look at these things like zero to one dollar and one to ten dollars and and ten to a hundred dollars and a hundred to a thousand dollars. But really, I, I think what we really want to focus on is you know, probably from from this point up, okay? So I'm not I'm not going to spend too much time looking at at things below a hundred dollars. What I want to draw your attention to are are wallets or addresses, I should say, that hold between 100 to 1,000 USDs worth of Bit US dollars worth of Bitcoin. And I'm going to go up from there. Now, one thing to remember with on-chain data is that it could be manipulated. Sometimes, you know, you could just be sort of spreading your Bitcoin out amongst various wallets, or maybe sometimes you're consolidating a lot of different wallets into one. That would obviously be reflected on chain. So I don't want anyone to think that they can take any type of on-chain analysis necessarily to the bank, because I don't think anyone there is going to cash that in for you. But what we can do is, given those disclaimers, we can see if there are any trends in the market. One of the reasons I, I like the narrative that we're going to sort of try to tell here is because it really shows the, the types of investors that come into the market. The general thesis that I have for Bitcoin, and I'm sure is a lot of other people, is that it should trend higher with time. And one of the most popular forms of criticism I received in 2021 when I, I said, look, guys, as much as everyone wants Bitcoin to go to 100K in 2021, there really is no evidence to suggest that that's going to happen. Okay, there's a lot of metrics we were looking at in 2021, especially back in, in February, March, and April, where we said, look, 100K just is highly unlikely in, in 2021. And one of the reasons we said that was because you know, looking at our, our logarithmic regression lines and understanding diminishing returns, that was one part of it, but also understanding that the sheer amount of volume that needs to come into the space to support these higher market capitalizations is, I think, a lot higher than a lot of people think. And so a lot of times people might say things like, well, you're not accounting for the institutions coming in. No, the, the models, the you know, regression models that sort of just increase with value, increase in value monotonically, you are assuming that bigger money comes into the space. If bigger money does not come into the space, then we no longer track the model. Okay, so we, we can't track the model if we don't see, you know, deeper pockets continue to come into the space. And in, this, in, in these charts, we're sort of going to visualize that. So we start off back in, in 2011 and 2012 where the amount of Bitcoin supply held by addresses with between $100 to $1,000 in Bitcoin, it really spiked during the, during the 2011 rally. So fairly small though, okay? I, I mean, these are they're still fairly small addresses I and mean, you're talking about 100 to 1,000. I don't say that, you know, lightly. I mean, I, I understand that $1,000 can, can be a lot of money, but when you're talking about people in the space now that have, you know, $5 billion, like some of these larger whales that we've been following recently, obviously there's a big difference between that and, and, and looking at wallets between 100 to 1,000 US dollars worth of Bitcoin. So what do you notice that you see a spike in this rally over here, and then it drops significantly in 2013? Now, you might jump to the conclusion and I think there's two stories to tell. You might jump to the conclusion that it's dropping 
simply because these guys that bought in over here are now deciding to take profits. And what you will notice is that this went down significantly during the first rally in 2013, not the second. So I think one narrative to tell is that this went down significantly because some people that probably bought this top over here decided to sell on this, on this parabolic rally. And you can see that it dropped significantly upon crossing the prior all-time high. Okay, so you know if you if I just have that line sort of overlaid, I the the, the tooltip kind of covers it up a little bit there. But if you just sort of have it overlaid there, you can see that it dropped once Bitcoin hit that prior all-time high. So people came in, they continued to accumulate, and then it went parabolic and it dropped. One of the reasons likely is because a lot of people sold. Another reason, just as likely for a lot of people, is that the supply held by addresses with only $100 to $1,000 in Bitcoin, the reason it dropped is because those, those people, those addresses now owns between $1,000 to $10,000 in Bitcoin. You're sort of seeing the wealth be created, right? You know, as time goes on, the, the asset class trends higher. And so you're, you're sort of watching some of these smaller addresses become larger addresses. I mean, again, I'm not trying to say that it, some of these people aren't selling. I'm sure they are, but you can kind of see that take place. And in the same way that you saw the $100 to $1,000 addresses spike in 2011 and then drop in 2013, watch what happens when you go to an order of magnitude higher. The, it goes up for the same time that the previous order of magnitude went down, but then this metric goes down during the second 2013 peak, right? So during the second one. So again, you probably have a combination of some larger wallets coming in and buying this rally here after we crossed the prior all-time high. And then some of them, I'm sure, took profits on the second peak where this sold off, where, where, where longer-term holders sold off. But furthermore, the other reason is because likely there were people that just held on to their Bitcoin and now it was just worth more because the price of Bitcoin had basically gone up another order of magnitude. What's interesting is this pattern continues to repeat. You're watching the wealth basically be created. You're also likely watching people FOMO into rallies, be patient, and then sell during the next rally. So I think it's a combination of both. It's not just one. What do you think the next chart's going to look like, right? I mean, you can see the, the 100 to 1,000. You can see the mania phase of 2011 saw the spike there, and then the drop occurred on the first peak of 2013. If you go up from 1,000 to 10,000, you can see we had, we had a sort of a wick here, but we had a major move up in the first peak of 2013, and then sort of the major drop in the second peak of 2013. What do you think it looks like for 10 to 100,000, right? It's not rocket science, my friends. It's data science you see a huge move up during the second 2013 peak. So again, right when you saw it going down for the $1,000 to $10,000 uh, you know, addresses that, that held that amount of Bitcoin, you see it going up. Again, you're, you're likely watching two things. You're watching likely wealth being created, and therefore those, those some addresses are moving into the next bracket. You're probably also watching people take profits that bought in during a prior mania phase. Bitcoin is somewhat cruel in that it brings in people during a mania phase and then makes them be patient before they can actually take profits at a higher price, okay? If that's what they're trying to do. Again, the idea is that the asset class trends higher with time. And so some people like to just hold through everything. Some people like to take advantage of, of, of the ebb and flow of the market. But again, you see the same thing. A spike during the second rally and then the major drop. When? You guessed it when we crossed the prior all-time high, right? We crossed the prior all-time high. That's when this went down. What that shows is that during this long bear market, a lot of people, you know, were, were likely, you know, likely accumulating and whatnot, and then maybe they sold into the rally or their addresses were just worth more because the price of Bitcoin went up. But again, there's no mistaking the trend. I mean, you're, you're essentially watching the asset class grow. You're watching all that money come into the space. Larger and deep, you know, deeper pockets are likely coming in and buying more Bitcoin now that it can be trusted more. It's not just something that's going to go to zero. And also looking at, at likely people taking profits and trying to trying to swing swing that longer term game. What do you think the next level is going to look like? Right? What do you think? The one hundred thousand to one million U.S. dollar. Again. It's not rocket science. You see the spike going into the 2017 rally, and the drop did not occur until the 2020 rally, right? It's just being shifted 
from one peak to another. You go from every single one, right? And it's just being shifted. This one is up in 2011 and then down in the first part of 2013. The next one was up in 2013 and then down in the second half of 2013. 10,000 to 100,000 up in the second half of 2013, down into 2017. 100K to 1 million up in late 2017, and then a huge drop in 2021. What's interesting about this? When did it drop? You guessed it, my friends, when we crossed the prior all-time high. That's when it dropped. So it says two things. There were probably a lot of people that came in and accumulating during the, accumulated Bitcoin during this bear market and, and, and probably sold into this rally. We, we've seen that with the hodl ways. We saw the long-term investors sort of, um, you know, sort of selling off. Just a brief segue, uh, if I if I may, just looking at long-term holders on on the hodl waves for Bitcoin again. You can see they were they were mostly very very likely selling off during this distribution phase, just like they did in 2017, just like they did during the two peaks in 2013, and just like they did in 2011. Right. I hope I hope you keep it up with with this train of thought. Maybe it is somewhat confusing. Probably probably not my smoothest video, but it is interesting, to say the least. So. One of the things I think uh, you know to consider here is we're seeing that same thing play out. And in this case, the drop occurred going into this distribution phase. Again, this is between 100,000 to a million. Well, why did it drop? Did it drop because people were taking profits that accumulated in the bear market? It's probably part of it. I, I mean, I was also taking profits during the first distribution phase over here. I was not during the second one because I'm like, well, I mean, hell, I already took the profits I wanted to take from, you know, all the way back down here. And honestly, swing trading 2Xs isn't really my thing. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I'd I like to think I did really well during this first one. And then the second one, it's just been kind of boring. It's, it's just been a, kind of like a bear market, you know? I mean, again, I mean, just call it what it is. I mean, I, I'm not saying we can't come out of it. I, I do think a lot of people have a hard time admitting things are a bear market. And, and by the time sort of the last group of people are, are finally to admit it, it's probably time to shift back to, to a bull market at that point. But that is what happened, right? You're seeing that wealth be, you know, move from, from one order of magnitude to another. So what do you think the next tier looks like, right? I mean, if, if 100K to a million drops here, <laughs> what do you think happens on this line? Again, you guessed it, my friends, right? 1 million to 10 million. That's where that one went up. You're watching two things likely. Again, wealth being created because addresses are now getting worth, they're becoming worth more and more. You're probably also watching deeper pockets come into the space because again, more people trust Bitcoin as time goes on. The thesis, again, is that the asset class trends higher with time. That is the thesis. And, and I, I would argue that it's best modeled by, by logarithmic regression. Right, it, it, this is the idea. It, it trends higher with time. We go through boom and bust cycles, and and some people like to take advantage of those cycles, and some people don't. You know, and and they're somewhat ir unpredictable to some degree. You know, I know I know people were talking about. Um, we've talked about cycle theory, but you know the distribution phase where a lot of a lot of the long term investors, including you know including I'm sure some of you guys took some profits. I mean, it only occurred three years after the 2017 peak, right? I mean, this occurred at the end of 2017. Bitcoin went parabolic the very end of 2020 and early 2021, and then it sort of just went sideways since then. So that only occurred about three years later. But going back to, to sort of these native units, or sorry, to the USD denominated units on, on Bitcoin, what you'll notice when looking at the 1 million to 10 million is that there was not a drop during the second peak. So the other ones there were, you know, for, for that sort of denomination, right? So the 1K to 10K, you, you saw the drop after we put in a new all-time high. You saw the drop during the next mania phase for this, for, you know, an order of magnitude higher going into 2017. Same thing here. It dropped going into this distribution phase after putting in a new all-time high. 1 million to 10 million. Nada, right? No drop. I think one of the things that it shows is, is probably a couple of things. Well, first of all, you know, had Bitcoin continued to go up to the six-figure milestone in 2021, which again we said was likely not going to happen, you probably would have seen this drop significantly. Probably because those addresses would have been worth more, but also because some of the more recent people that bought in early 2021 were perhaps going to take profits if it if it played out like that. So it's interesting because what it shows is that 
you know, really there hasn't been as large of a distribution phase potentially um, or that creation of wealth as we've seen during prior moves to new all-time highs. I think it's an interesting chart. The last thing I will leave you with when, when thinking about these charts is to go to the very last one we have on here. And that's greater than 10 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin in addresses. And it tells a really interesting story. What is that story? Well, look at this peak here. The amount of Bitcoin held when we were at this first, this second peak of 2013, the amount of Bitcoin held in addresses that held at least 10 million US dollars of Bitcoin was only 2.33 million Bitcoin. Despite the fact that we were at the same price many years later, the amount of Bitcoin held in addresses with at least 10 million Bitcoin was 3.25 million. So what does that show? It shows that during this bear market, there were a lot of larger addresses accumulating and they accumulated during the bear market. And then by the time we got back to the bull market, there was a lot more Bitcoin that was being held by addresses with that certain amount of Bitcoin. Now, this gets even more obvious during this one. Look in 2017, the amount of Bitcoin held in addresses that had at least 10 million Bitcoin by the peak was 7.36 million Bitcoin. Okay, 7.36 million. But what's interesting is by the time that Bitcoin hit its prior all-time high, the amount of Bitcoin was at around, you know, just under 10 million. So, okay, maybe it's not as maybe it's not as 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 distinctly pronounced as as I, I initially thought, but it still shows you that even though the price was sort of chopping around for a while, a lot of money was just continuing to pour in and to support the growing adoption of Bitcoin. What I also think is interesting is that despite the fact that we went to a lower local top in 2019, the amount of Bitcoin held in addresses that had at least 10 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin was actually higher than it was in 2017, right? It was actually higher. So again, a lot of people took advantage of this dip. By the time we actually put in new all-time highs, I mean, you can see this was just going absolutely parabolic. And then now since then, you know, the, it looks like the highest it hit was a little over 11.1 million, 11.2 million Bitcoin held in addresses that held at least 10 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin. And it hasn't really done a whole lot since then, right? So perhaps this is going to be some metric, I think, to watch. My guess is that until there's a bit more regulation in the space, you're not going to see this number absolutely explode as much as we'd like to see it explode. I do think it will explode. I think we need a bit more time. You know, I, I don't necessarily think that we're going to see it explode during, you know, during such a risk off time as we as we continue to watch things like the US dollar currency index rally, we, we watch the Fed remain relatively hawkish, we're watching CPI print basically go higher and higher every month. Once some of those things start to turn around, and perhaps once we have a bit more regulation in the space where the deeper pockets, the deeper wallets can come in and feel a bit more confident, I don't think you're going to see this go quite parabolic in the way that it did over here. So what do we need? We just need time, right? We just need time. Eventually, we'll likely, you know, we'll probably go put in a new all-time high, and we'll likely see a major drop-off in in these wallet addresses. And at some point, we'll probably have to start tracking, you know, 10 million to 100 million, and then greater than 100 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin as the as the price of Bitcoin continues to appreciate with time. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. We also do have into the cryptoverse premium at into the cryptoverse.com you can find these charts not only for bitcoin for a lot of other cryptocurrencies as well and not only do we have supply chart i mean look at all these charts we have we have addresses valuation charts transaction charts mining charts for a lot of different cryptocurrencies it's only scratching the surface derivative charts social media charts nft charts a lot of stuff right you can always check it out um, and see if it's your thing but I, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this analysis. I know it's dubious at best, but that's what we specialize here, specialize in here on this channel. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.